Hello everyone and happy Wednesday. It's time for Wednesday Word. And I am going to talk today for a brief time about a book that I discovered um, last night actually after I got off of the call that we had for conversation and prayer and the call where we were talking about our book study. Um, and in the prayer time, we had a really heavy prayer time and there were a lot of needs that were expressed that were hard things. And um, I started to think about uh, this idea that, you know, sort of our world is going to hell in a handbasket and uh, things are worse now than they've ever been. And this belief that can really get us stuck into a um, not uplifting outlook. And while I do think it's extremely important for us to be aware of what's going on around the world, I think we need to be really careful about letting that in um, in a cautious way. If we start to think about this all the time, these terrible things, these disasters, the scary stuff, it's very easy to get stuck in a spiral of fear. And I believe that God does not give us a uh, the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind, which comes from the Bible. And there's a lot in the Bible about do not be afraid. So I don't think God wants us to be afraid. Um, so what I want to talk a little bit about today is joy as a practice um, that we can use to dispel fear, but not, again, as I've said in some other times I've spoken, not a, not a fake sort of everything's great, what we call sort of toxic positivity. We also want to be honest about the truth of the fact that there are some terrible things happening in the world. But I will also say that as much as it may seem like things are getting worse and worse, there are a lot of things in the world that are getting better. So let us also focus on that. Um, things are not the way we want them to be yet for women, but they sure are better than they were 50 years ago. Things are not the way we want them to be for people of color, but they sure are better than they were 50 years ago. Things are not the way we want them to be or wish they would be for our LGBTQ IA siblings, but things are certainly better than they were 25 years ago. So while we still have work to do, a lot of work to do, and some hard work to do, let's not get stuck into the idea that things are going and getting progressively worse. Because in a number of areas in the world, things are getting progressively better. Think about all the advances that we've made in medicine. Think about how many people now don't die of cancer because of the treatments that we have available that would have died 50 years ago. Think about the um, breakthroughs we have in transportation and communication that allow people to be connected with one another all over the world. I could go on and on. So I just want to caution us to not get stuck into this idea that things are going downhill and you know, I call it the chicken little mentality. The sky is falling. The sky is falling. And so I was thinking about this after we got off our call last night. And um, I had this book in my list of things to do. And it just so happened that I looked at my list of podcasts. And I have a favorite podcast, which is called We Can Do Hard Things. If you have not listened to this podcast and you enjoy listening to podcasts, this is, I believe, for me, the best podcast right now that's out there. And it's called We Can Do Hard Things. And it is three women, um, Glennon Doyle, her wife, Abby Wambach, and Glennon's sister, Amanda. And the three of them talk about various different topics that are difficult. Um, things that are, you know, kind of being debated in society at the moment, challenges people are having, and they always have extremely interesting 
authors on. Most of the books that I read about, I hear about through this podcast. Glennon Doyle is one of my favorite writers and she loves, she's also a reader and often will have um, writers on that have written books that she has recently read that have moved her. And this um, book that I'm going to show you, I want, I went by the Silver Unicorn this morning because I actually wanted to be able to hold up the book to show it to you. And it was very frustrating because they had, the computer said that they had the book in stock, but they couldn't find it anywhere in the store. So I wasn't able to get the actual book. So I do have the Kindle, which I got, and you can still see it's a really pretty cover. It's called Inciting Joy. There's a little bit of a, when I'm holding up the Kindle, there's a reflection. Inciting Joy by Ross Gay. And he is a best-selling New York Times author. His previous book is called The Book of Delights. He is an um, African-American man and uh, a poet. And this is a book of essays about joy. And his thing that he likes to say is that joy and sorrow are, are intertwined with one another. And this is an idea that I'd been working on with my previous spiritual director, I tended to think of things in a very sort of a black and white kind of way. You know, either I had a bad day or a good day, or this particular thing that was happening to me was a joy or it was a sorrow. Um, and I remember my spiritual director at the time, Pastor Holly, and she was saying, you know, you can't think about this in this sort of binary way. It's not one or the other. Oftentimes things are intertwined and it's, it's helped me a lot in my own spirituality to start trying to think about things like this. I still tend to gravitate towards classifying things in one way or another. And so I have to constantly remind myself not to do that and not to think like that. So you really do need to train yourself. But uh, I'm going to read you just a few little excerpts from this book, and I am going to continue reading it, and hopefully next Wednesday I'll have something more to share with you because I just discovered it last night. So what happened was I went on the podcast, I looked up my podcast list, and I saw on my favorite podcast, We Can Do Hard Things, that they had this author, Ross Gay, was on the most recent edition of the podcast talking about his book, Inciting Joy. And so I listened to the podcast this morning on my way to church. And it was so clear to me that God had led me to listen to this particular podcast, you know, the day after we had this conversation in our prayer time about how many awful things were happening in the world right now. Um, and so this is one of the things that he writes. I have had the good fortune in the past several years since shortly after the publication of my third book of poems, which was called Catalog of Unabashed Gratitude, and probably again with my book of essays, The Book of Delights, to have had numerous con and sustained conversations about joy. These conversations might begin during question and answer sessions, in interviews, or even in the book signing line. I'll never forget a woman at a reading at a public library in April of 2016 in Claremont, California, one of those weird, beautifully ugly 60s California buildings. It was a rancher of a library, maybe with some faux stone on the front, maybe white brick. I suspect she was in her late 60s or early 70s. And as she asked me to inscribe the book, she was crying, just a little, not very able to talk. And she said, quietly wiping her face, I didn't know you could write about joy. On another time, this one from an undergrad at a reading I was giving, who about midway through the question and answer time said something along the lines of, I have always been told that you can't write about joy because it's not serious. And, as a pro and a professor at another school asked as much for the benefit of his students as it was a challenge, 
though that might be giving him the benefit of the doubt, which I'm practicing doing more of. When all of this is going on, and he held up his hands as though to imply, war, famine, people all over the world in cages or concentration camps, some of them children, disease, sorrow, immense and imperturbable. It's only getting worse and worse. Why would you write about joy? And I'm not going to read any more of the book because I'm going to leave us hanging with that question. And we are already at 10 minutes. So I am going to say that over the next few weeks, I'm going to be investigating that question and how writing and thinking and talking about joy, how it is absolutely necessary during these times where so many terrible things seem to be happening in the world. But also to temper that, that the fact, and I'm not denying it, that so many things are happening in the world that are terrible, every day all around us there are also wonderful and amazing and good things happening. So let us not forget that. All right, let us close in prayer and I'm going to send you on your way. Let's pray. Gracious God, we know that you have created us for joy. You created us out of joy and you said that we were good and that everything that has been created by you is good. And so help us, Lord, to look for the good. And while we, of course, need to pray for the needs of the world, and while we, of course, need to take notice of all of the injustices and things in the world that need to be fixed, and we need to work towards that, what an act of resistance it is to continually practice joy and to notice joy and to talk about it and think about it and pray about it and give thanks for it. So help us as we go forward this day and the rest of this week to think about joy and to look for it, to look for it in tiny little spaces, to look for it in situations, to look for it inside of ourselves and all around us. We praise you and we thank you and we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, go and look everywhere for the joy, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.